you're gonna really love this. And this boat's been around for a while. She's had a sort of a tough life. There are a number of things that do not work on the boat. She has your favorite bowsprit on it. Can't be all bad, right? Like it. I love this cockpit. Oh, my favorite thing though. This has not a place for your engine. This has an engine room. Hi there, this is Captain Q. Join us as we travel hither and yon to show you some great deals on some really interesting boats and maybe learn just a little bit with each one. Captain! Hey Randy, I hear you out there somewhere. What's happening? Hey, there you are. Oh, hey pal. What do you think about this? It's uh... uh I'm trying to figure out, and this is sort of an optical protrusion, right? Where are these giant teeth coming down? Or are they red waves coming up? I see teeth. You think teeth? Yeah. Okay. This boat we're going to look at is not perfect, but a lot of you will like to find boats that aren't perfect. Yep. And this is another kind of super find. It's in the 40-foot range. It's fiberglass. Uh, it has a great heritage. It only has 100 hours on the engine. Wow. That's one of the best things about it, among other things. The present owners had it for 10 years, and they're, they've gone as far as the... Uh, Grenadines, I think. So they oh, really nice. went way south and came back again. But let me warn you, she's tired. So let's go take a look at this tired beauty. Yeah, sounds great. There. What do you think about that? Oh, yeah. Center cockpit. Center cockpit, catch, catch. fiberglass, full length keel down here. Uh, this was designed by Ted Brewer. We have to th give great thanks to our neighbors up north. Because of Canada, we have hockey, uh, I have a wife, <laughs> and third, we have a gentleman emigrating from Denmark to come to Canada, and his name is Kurt Henson, and he came to Canada in 1954, and then he started to build uh, folk boats. And uh, What's a folk boat? A folk boat's about a 25-foot uh, uh, lapstrake hull. Uh, they're uh, Scandinavian design, about a three-quarter to a seven-eighths rig in it. And they were a nice little small family racing boat. 1957, he started to build these, these boats, and eventually they were uh, designed to be built in fiberglass. But the original boats were all wood. In 1960, just three years later, he bought a plant in Whitby, Ontario, and he started, uh, he got a design uh, to build, you ready for this one? Yep. Alberg 30s. Oh, Have we ever heard of those? Very pretty. He stepped it up a little bit and got Ted Brewer to design this boat right here. This is the Whitby 42. Interestingly enough, this is, has the same name as the town that the boat was built in. Randy, we just want to take a second here to thank the kind people at Undoes It for uh, sponsoring this particular episode of Captain Q Yacht Hunter. And they've supplied us with a number of different products. This particular one is uh, a black streak remover. And we're going to give it a try right here, right now. We found some right here. So let's just see what Undoes It does. Uh, now this stuff is biodegradable. It's phosphate-free, chlorine-free, and uh, ammonia-free, and hydrocarbon-free. But that's good if you wash it over the side and you don't have to worry about polluting the environment? Exactly, exactly. All their stuff is made very much the same way. So we're going to try it here in a couple of spots. And they suggest that you uh, just wait for about 30 seconds or so. And let's just see what we do here with this. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh my gosh, it, it's... We're attacking it. It's working. <laughs> look how... I, I, I may sound surprised, but so many of these products, they tell you they'll take the, uh, they'll take the stains away. And these stains have been on here uh, for some time. Now, they also recommend that you go over it with, some, uh, with a wet rag. So I'm doing that right now. See if that, oh, it's already starting to make them lighten up. And down here, this is gone. Look at that. That's, that's for real. This is almost sort of a year anniversary, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it might be even today. What are you going to give me for my anniversary? Ooh, what's the first anniversary? Silver? Undoes it. This is coming off. See, this part already is starting to come off right here. If I stayed up here for another few minutes, I'd get rid of this unsightly mark. We've gotten the, the smears right here taken care of, which is what they promised us on the can. And I think it's pretty terrific. I am really delighted to see Undoes It does such a great job. I would say... To our fellow viewers, give this stuff a try. Undoes yep. it. There is a link in the description below, right down here. <laughs> wow, that really came out nicely. We should probably get on with the episode, shouldn't we? 
Yeah. What do you say? <laughs> She's a balsa cord down to the boot top from the the uh, shear all the way down to the boot top. She has a full length keel on her, very deep full length keel. There were two boats that were built after this one called a 12.5 and a 44, uh, Brewer 44. They, were, they came out of the same hull mold and they just modified a few things. And from about here back, it was empty, okay? That was, that, that was taken away and it's been referred to as the Brewer Bite. She carries almost 300 gallons of water in her in three separate tanks, okay? It's probably like, it's actually close to 280 gallons, I think. She still has about 160 gallons of fuel. This is a unique bowsprit, just up your alley. You see, it has a viewing window there. <laughs> so when you get up on the bowsprit, you can look through that viewing window and see water everywhere. Wooden bowsprit's not unlike a wooden spreader on a sailboat, and they're great. Wooden spreaders work, and they've worked for years but people forget about them because they're up high and out of the way. And they'll then eventually get sunbaked and the varnish, the paint on them, whatever will go. Then they get rotten, next thing you know, you've got a bad one. What's this puppy again? It's a bobstay. The bobstay, massive here. Really solid rod, rod right here. Stainless fittings, well fit into the hull. These boats originally had a bit of a weather helm to them, but by extending the headstay out on the, uh, on the bow pulpit, uh, they managed to ease that issue, and she tracks a whole lot better than the basic boat that didn't get it. What's the draft on her? Uh, the draft on this is five feet, I believe. Buttocks uh, extend out about 20, 23% of the distance out uh, of the boat, and quarter to a third of the length of the boat forward of the aft end of the stern. And that's when these flatten out. They would flatten out these lines. You wouldn't have this curved line coming up here. This will tend to create a very large stern wave. You can look at some of his later designs where this gets flattened out for quite a ways up uh, in here. And that's out to about here. And this will be very flat run coming out and it will give the boat a little better speed off the wind and downwind. What do you say we head up topside, huh? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Hey, Randy. Yeah. Once again, I'm going to invite you to come on board this boat. Oh, thanks. I am so comfortable in this chair. This is the most comfortable I've ever sat in on a, in a boat cushion. Let's talk about this cockpit. Enormous cockpit, right? Sunbathing. There's going to be a dodger that'll come back and cover, you know, give you good protection from the seaway, especially always required on a, on a center cockpit boat. A couple things to notice right off the bat for anybody that's ever looked at a Whitby 42. These boats came with two things originally. One, they came with a companionway right here that led down into the after cabin. Yep. The other thing, which goes to, as you might imagine, the after cabin, is the console with the steering. Now, the original boats came with hydraulic steering. Hydraulic steering is work, it, it, it works, and you can have a small wheel and you can kind of steer. The hydraulics are very powerful. But if you're sailing the boat, and you're expecting feedback from the rudder, you're not gonna feel it in a hydraulic situation. An option or an add-on later was to put in a big wheel with uh, cable steering, and they've done that on this boat. I love this cockpit, and, and it's the, the combings, look how deep these are. We're really locked in here. Yeah. This is a little bit like the Wokie. I know that you were mentioning other aspects about this boat that had Wokie feel to them. It's Tell me about the, this uh, paint on the combing, because I, I see well, some teak underneath it, right? This, yeah, this, this owner, I'm just going to take a little piece like this, Matt. I don't think it'll make a big difference. Uh, this owner uh, bought the boat from a man down in, in I believe, Fort Lauderdale and he was a painter and he painted the whole boat and I'm sure the boat was immaculate 10 years ago but uh, he painted over the teak. Teak doesn't like to have stuff on it particularly even varnish you see varnish teak all the time but it takes six or seven coats and you recoat it twice you know summer normally. Would so you she, take that down back to the teak or how would, what oh, would you do Oh absolutely and I think it would take about two seconds to do that. <laughs> a I could do it right now. A sharp pair of fingernails. <laughs> right. There we go. Here we have another uh, on-deck ice chest, and you could fill this up with a couple hundred pounds of ice, I think, and have sodas for a week. Uh, right here handy to the helmsman, who will I... never be thirsty. Uh, 
self-tailing winches. There's only the generator trim forward for these winches. We don't have turning blocks on here, but it should have a turning block somewhere back. You could rig one up on the car here, so that instead of just leading it right to the winch, it goes back, turns around, and comes back to the winch, and it's a much safer rig. Where's, ah. the, tra where's the traveler for the main? There is no traveler for the main, and we saw this on a couple of other boats that we've, we've looked at, and where they've just put in a, the uh, Golf Star and also the um, Stevens 47 had a single eye uh, with no traveler and I'm not certain why they do it except with the, the, the concept is to rely on the vang and if you've got a good vang you can control the leech of the sail. Randy one more thing before we leave this cockpit this is the jewel on this boat you're going to be surprised because there you go you can see that engine room can you bend oh, yeah. it on or not? Yeah. Now in a minute we'll go below and you'll really see how much room there is down there and how accommodating it's going to be. So we'll take a little walk aft here. Ooh. Okay, <laughs> on the stern we've got two sets of running backstays here. This mass is pretty well stayed. It has the two running backs. It's got a set of uppers, a set of lowers, and uh, lower forwards and lower aft. But the one more line up there too, if you look right at the masthead, and you'll see the triadic. If the main mast falls over, it's going to try and pull the mizzen mast too. Let's take a look at these lockers back here. Okay, here's our propane tank storage. It's good. Again, uh, we, need, we need some gasketing on this just to make me happy. And the other side is going to be storage for fenders and so forth. Yeah, right between them, what do you think this is? That looks like an emergency rudder post. It is exactly that. These little catches are, are sweet, but they're tricky. So, there we go. Uh, it looks like they've been keeping maybe gasoline for an outboard in there. And if this is vented, that would be an okay thing to do. Here's a, the uh, eye for your mizzen sheet. And right now I'm holding on to a ladder that will open up like so and drop down and you can just step right off the boat. The original companionway into the after cabin went right down here. So you had an opening sliding hatch cover and then take out the washboards and you'd walk below. Well, think about that. If you've got this big hole here and you have a mast that we know has stepped on deck, where's the arch? Yeah, you need Where some... are you going to put the compression post? Yep. And they didn't do that with this, apparently. So the fellow who did the close this over did it for a couple of reasons, we're told. One was to give him more room in the after cabin. And there is more space now that, that companionway's gone. And I believe so, somewhere in the back of his mind, he said, once that's all glassed over, this thing's not going anywhere. This is from above. This is your, your, your launch here. You're going to have to build a new little piece to fit in there, but that's a simple piece of carpentry. Even Captain Q could do that. You wouldn't keep that observation port? No, I think it's best to uh, uh, close it up because I think you'd get so excited you could fall down that hole. Anyway, this is, this is great. Nice big Furlex Genoa roller furler unit. All looks to be in okay shape. Uh, some of the lines on board the boat are pretty sunbaked and tired and could use a little help. There is a, a single CQR on the bow uh, with a length of chain going down here into an electric uh, looks like single speed. So I look at this, the teak tow rail here. When you renovate this, do you cut it out and do you scarf in a new piece there? Or do you do the whole tow rail? Uh, I guess you... No, you could, you scarf, no, 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 no. Yeah. You'd scarf that piece in right there. So Randy, you love bulwarks, I love bulwarks. And these bulwarks are, are particularly nice uh, because they don't just go straight up, there's a little rail cap on it. So your foot's gonna catch underneath, it'll hit here and then maybe catch here. Uh, down low here, uh, I see a nice eye. It's in the right position to be the uh, forward end of a vang that's going to the boom. Uh, and also notice what we've got here too. We have mast steps. Oh. We saw those on another boat. Uh, yeah, the Endeavor. Exactly, and that'll take you right up to heaven, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of nice open deck space here for sun tanning, just hanging out. Look, there's just a lot of room on this boat. It reminds me a little bit of the Irwin, but just a little, uh, a little more angular. Uh, 
a little nicer waterways. I like the slightly raised cabin here all the way forward. Set your staysail on that and then tighten it up with these, these uh, shrouds here. It's about that time. Okay, let's... Here we go. Hey, Randy. Yep. Come on down, come on down. Oh, thanks. Uh, you're gonna really love this. Just take a quick look around this and you'll see why this has been uh, highlighted and praised by so many cruising sailors for being one of the better live aboard layouts. And one of the keys to that, it's very simple. It has a 13 foot beam on a 42 foot uh, deck. I'm sitting at this really nice uh, galley table. There's no leaves to pop up or drop down. There's plenty of hatches, a great big overhead hatch here, another one in the forward cabin. Other amenities here in this particular boat, there is reverse cycle air and heat, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it probably does not work. And of course, we've got storage everywhere. Nice big library back in here. Stainless port lights with, uh, looks like bulletproof glass in there again. We've got some uh, sea dogs cousins. Here. Well, that's the thing that really attracted me to this boat. Some of the <laughs> earlier listings on the boat showed two really wonderful dogs. And I have a feeling that sea dog would love to meet them. This is a pretty wonderful galley. Uh, like everything, it's, it's, there's a tiredness to it. Um, we have two sinks. They're not the deepest sinks, but they're pretty darn deep and they're double and they're right on the center line. So we're happy with that. There's a little handheld pump or a little hand pump here probably for your, your fresh water just to preserve fresh water usage. One thing we have here, we have a pot and pan locker. We've always liked looking at these things. This is the biggest. This one, Randy, you could get into like you got into the refrigerator <laughs> on the Irwin 41. Uh, this boat is really equipped to store uh, food and go offshore great distances. So big deep locker storage here. And right in front of this, we have a three burner propane stove. And I have to tell you, this one has been used. I mean, look, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's all kind of a little rusty and everything. And uh, look, look at the inside of that oven. I bet they've made a billion loaves of bread in there and, and broiled steaks and mahi mahi and all that. Do you broil mahi mahi? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so that was pretty good. That would be que rico. Que rico. You know what that means? No, oh, what? Delicious. Delicious? Yeah. How did you know that? <laughs> My friend Google told me. So uh, this is a, a nice little tray up here. I like this little tray. This is, we've got a place to put all your spices. I'm always looking for little spice trays and racks. And it's got the bungee cord here and that'll keep them in for the most part. Let's see what we have up here. <gasps> Let's get to the back of the instruments. You're gonna wanna be able to get back here because you're gonna remove all three of these. <laughs> <laughs> now look at this. Look at the light that just came in here. <sighs> this is all Refrigeration, wow. all refrigeration. Uh, part of it can be uh, refrigeration itself, and <laughs> these guys know how to sail, don't they? <laughs> they really know how to sail. Now, this is the same thing we had on PB. It chills down, the, there's a, a big compressor, it's sort of like an old automotive compressor. They were called the Tecumseh, I think was the manufacturer, but, and it'd be driven by the belt, and it would compress the air like air conditioning, and it would make these plates in here very cold, and they were great. Now, in this boat, I have to tell you, uh, they don't work at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the owner said he's taking the compressor, the compressor died and he took it right off the boat. So you can retrofit that, maybe pull it right out. And would you uh, put another compressor based system in? Or well, you, you could, there are better systems out there right now. This system needs to have the engine run. Uh, there, there are 12 volt systems that you can put in there and with some solar panels, you just let the boat sit on the mooring and you will have um, ice for your Wow, tea. that's pretty great. So it is, it's very great. And this, here's something else we always like, don't we? Look at that. Front loading ice box. Now on the other side, and again, notice my headroom has been good. We have six, five headroom down the center and at least six, two or three on the sides here. And we have a nice big nav station here. Captain Q measuring stick fits right in perfectly. Uh, good storage in here. This is set up, it's tilted so that you can navigate on, at an angle. And then they've also put a little bar in here. So you flip that up and it makes it flat. And I even like having all this air open to me. They're all intact and they're in great shape. I just want to show you one thing here. This is nice. This is a little confused right now with the wiring setup and so forth, but this is your foul weather locker right underneath the, uh, yep. right underneath the companionway. So you come down take off your foul weather pants and jacket, hang it up in here. Why don't we, look at the rest of the jewel on the boat. Ooh. Kind of reminds me of the walkway. Yes, it is. Uh, very much so. What would you say the standing room is there? Oh, I'd say it's, uh, it's bent over standing room. <laughs> <laughs>
Now let me just open this engine room here. And this, I don't know, might, might just blow you away. Oh wow. Look at that. Uh, have you ever seen such accessibility? Only on a few boats. So that's a fuel tank on the other side, by the way. And there's a fuel tank under here right behind us. So those are the two wing tanks for the fuel. And uh, this is a Ford Lehman, has 100 hours on it since total rebuild. So the original one was 62 horse. Uh, they did go up to a larger size, to an 82 horse, I think. This is actually an engine room. Yep. This is not an engine space. You could probably fit on that other, other plateau on the other side if you wanted uh, a generator. What's the giant blue pipe? That looks awfully big. That's the exhaust uh, from the engine. And it goes up, and you see it goes over to the the the, uh, the muffler, water muffler on the other side. Yep. And uh, that will that will exhaust the engine, and combine it with water that's been used as coolant uh, coming out of the ocean. Uh, this is part of the steering system. We talked about hydraulics, and this is not hydro. This is this is all cable driven, and uh, uh, makes a uh, a world of difference in your steering on the boat. So here's. Uh, the 12-volt system and the 110-volt system here. And you know how we don't like this in the way of the companion, in the way of the, the open hatch, do we? This is really buried. This is going to be a dry one. How would you rate this uh, access compared to the walkway? Do you remember? Oh, they're about the same. This might be a little lower. Check out the size of this, this baby. Oh, wow. It's really enormous. Six ports plus another one in the head, of course. Tons of ventilation. You're practically outdoors here again. The overhead back here is in great shape. In here houses the compression aspect for the mast. Uh, nice size head here. And what do we notice in there? Ah, we got a little uh, composting toilet. Exactly, yep. The composting toilet uh, is, is really a thing of the future, uh, but anything we can do to dispose of the holding tanks on boats. Uh, this hose above here, for those that aren't used to it, this is a vent. Um, it stays sweet as can be. We have a shower on board. Faucet will come out. It's a handheld faucet, part of the sink arrangement there. Oh yeah. This is the best aft cabin layout you can have in a boat. And we saw this where else? Oh, the Gulf Star? Exactly, yep. Good storage again, every place. Uh, look, there's shelving down there uh, for shoes and you know things that you, you know, don't really matter how low they are. And uh, are you gonna give it the uh, test? Oh, I can test this without any problem. Look, I can I can spring into this. <laughs> this is a double or a triple berth back here. We have one more cabin to do, don't we? Yeah, I guess you're going to be a little while. I should have saved this one. <laughs> now, before we go forward, I just want to stop here on the starboard side. These boats were originally designed with two swivel chairs, and uh, they're totally useless at sea, but when you spend a lot of time in port, they're really nice. So you have a choice here, and this is a pretty nice size settee here, so I don't know that I'd miss the swivels right away. But uh, if you want to play a deck of cards, have a little snack with somebody, they have this little fold-down piece. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Pretty great. And on either side, how do you like this? Ah. You have Ooh. your, I don't know, what this is this? little Merlot, is that? Yeah. So you have a, a wine rack built into this boat. You have all these other little lockers here too that are very handy and huh. for, for essentials. <laughs> uh, sails appear to be serviceable. I'm just looking at just one little stretch of, of stitching here and uh, uh, I, I think these would probably get you down the, the uh, road a little bit without too much trouble. Here are the controls for the uh, aqua air, the air conditioning. So coming forward, nice big, let me just catch my finger in there. Nice big hanging locker. And in here, we have a good size head and our old friend. The twofer. The twofer. <laughs> so, uh, nice size sink with a handheld shower here. And it's got its own little port light here, too, which is nice. Nice forward cabin, twofer head, plenty of storage, great big hatch. We have no port lights up here, interestingly enough, but you do have this big hatch right here, which is giving us, even right now, a nice breeze coming in. And this doesn't have the wood on it, but just to give you an idea with that in place. Look, look at the size here now. Almost king size. Nice lockers, high and dry, all the way around for sweaters and clothes. And there's another hanging locker behind this door, and I can close that door and say sayonara. Sayonara. 
Well, Randy, another great afternoon here on a really neat boat. An older Whitby 42 built in uh, 1982. And this boat's been around for a while. She's had a sort of a tough life. And as we mentioned, uh, there are a number of things that do not work on the boat, right? It has a motor that's just been hauled out and sent all the way down to Georgia. Only got 100 hours on that new rebuild. The hull looks solid. The deck felt solid, and she's been sunbaked a little bit, but what a wonderful layout. You know, 13-foot beam. Uh, she has your favorite bowsprit on it. Can't be all bad, right? Like it. Oh, my favorite thing, though. This has not a place for your engine. This has an engine room. All right, Randy, this, is, this boat deserves a score. That floater that starts out at 10, I, I can give her four for longevity. As far as design and layout and so forth, I'm going to give her another seven. I think that's 21. Whoa. Here's the best part of the 21. The price is $25,000. All you have to do is get her all cleaned up, put her in the water, and then follow in the wake of all the other Whitby 42s that have taken off around the world. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. So we're having too good a time doing these things, so uh, you can hit the bell or not. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram.